Hi, my name is John the Career Coach. Welcome to yet another podcast episode. Today's um, episode is very special. Uh, we are going to be talking about some of the frequently asked uh, interview questions. I always say the purpose of a CV is to land you an interview. The purpose of an interview is to land you an offer. And I would not have thought of a better person to help me with this discussion. Uh, she's going to introduce herself. Welcome, uh, Worms. Thank you so, so, so much, June. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Please tell us uh, who you are, other than the fact that we have uh, worked together in two different organizations. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. So just tell us who you are, uh, what you do. Okay. Thank you so very much for having me on the show. I totally, totally appreciate it. And I thank God because this has been years of conversation about collaboration yes. and working together um, with an amazing industry leader like yourself, right? So I'm Wamaida Karanja, Wamaida Wams, um, as I prefer to be called. It has an exclamation mark at the very end of that, W-A-M-Z. And I am the founder and lead associate of Canal Associates. Um, where we are charged with people and culture conversation. <coughs> so it be what you're saying about interviewing, mm -hmm. be it about CVs, be it about executive recruitment, outplacement when organizations need to let people go mm -hmm. home, um, or training, leadership and development, and storytelling for impact. That's what I'm about. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, so clearly you can tell we are uh, in safe hands and I am super, super excited to have you here. Right. Great. So today we are talking about some frequently asked interview questions. Right. And for this particular episode, we are going to, to answer three. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your strengths? And what are your areas <laughs> of development? Wams has told me we don't say what are your weaknesses no, anymore. We don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Because the minute you ask me, mm -hmm. or if I was to ask you, if mm. I was on the other side of the table, what are your weaknesses? Yeah. The first thing that happens to you as an individual, mm. forget to, as an interviewee, yeah. Yeah. is a wall comes up. Right. That this person has immediately judged me mm -hmm. and they can only see the areas I'm not good at. Right. How's about we use the wisdom? both our former boss taught us, yes, right? Areas. That it is areas of development. Right. It means these are areas I can actually identify mm -hmm. that I could do better in. Right. So I prefer to approach it from that point of view. You may not always, as the candidate, be on the table where somebody will ask you, what are your areas of development? Right. They will ask you, what are your weaknesses? weaknesses correct. But internalize that question positively. Right. Switch it up in your mind and say, what areas have I identified that I could do better? Exactly. So perhaps you're a person who procrastinates a lot. Mm -hmm. So kicking off a project takes a while. Mm -hmm. Or you're a person who loves to admire problems. Mm -hmm. So you sit with it, you mull over it, you look at it from all angles. By the time it's time to go, you've lost traction. Yeah. You've lost time. Yeah. Those are not areas that are positive for the work right. environment. Right. However, if you identify it, and are aware of it mm. now you can do something about it right yeah. right so when they um when the interviewer asks you know what are your uh, areas of development uh, what are your weaknesses basically what they're trying to find out mm -hmm. is um you know do, do you actually know uh, because then there are people who have not taken any time to think yes. about uh you know their areas of development and then mm -hmm. when you ask them they they you know I've actually interviewed people and they've said they don't have mm. they don't have areas of mm. development, which of course because, is a red flag. Thank you. Because chances are somebody somewhere whispered to them, Yeah, no, you go show them that you have this thing together. Yeah. It's not the truth. Exactly. We all have areas that we could do better. Exactly. But I like what you're alluding to. Are you aware? Are you aware? Are you aware? Which speaks aware? to your emotional intelligence. Exactly. Yeah, because then if you're highly emotionally intelligent, you know what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Or you're open to feedback even from others. Yes. And you can find a trusted <coughs> advisor. You mm -hmm. can find a trusted person who you know their thinking is sound mm. and you trust their journey. Right. Not just the things that come out of their mouth. You trust right. their journey. Right. What they do and what they say, mm. they are the same. Exactly. 
that type of person would give you candid feedback. Mm-hmm. If you have a good relationship with your line manager, right. where you can see that this person is about your good, mm-hmm. they want to lift you from where you are to the next level. Even sometimes when you feel that pressure is coming down, you can see where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. They are wanting better for you. Right. That's a person you can go to and ask, yeah. which areas do you see me not excelling in yeah. and how can I do better? Right. You can even take an online assessment mm-hmm. and a dime a dozen of them are free online now. Exactly. You don't even have to invest so much money in some of them, mm-hmm. right? And do an assessment. Do a psychometric assessment. Mm-hmm. What type of person am I in the workspace? Mm-hmm. Who am I nine to five compared to you know After five to, to, to nine? Nine p.m. or the next, <laughs> the next time. Mm-hmm. What type of person I am I? Yeah. And then identify are these areas you want to develop? Mm-hmm. Because it could be something that's innate about you yeah. that you can't change. Right. Case right. in point, mm-hmm. I'm an impatient person. Mm. Completely. Completely. And you know what? <laughs> I would not have said that. Like, yeah. it, it's actually something I've never picked. Imagine. I am extremely impatient. Mm-hmm. But over the years, I've put All in right. my 10,000 hours. Mm. Over the years, I have learned yeah. how to manage it mm. and use it for my advantage. Right. But if I said it to you and say, my weakness is impatience. Yeah. All you'll think of is, I can't wait for things to get done. I can't wait. And yes, in some instances, mm. it comes to be a strength yeah. because it pushes you to do things. Exactly. It pushes you to excel. But also, it can be a real headache. Ask mm. people who've reported it to me. <laughs> it can be a real headache <laughs> yeah. when I'm not understanding why we are struggling on an issue. Mm. Why aren't we moving? moving quickly. Yes, why aren't yeah. we progressing? So yeah. I've learned now to also read balance. the room and balance. And yeah. like you're saying, it comes with emotional intelligence. Right. But there are people who just get stuck in analysis paralysis. Mm. So even with the good information and the feedback, they still don't know what to do about it. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Those psychometric assessments are important. Right. Talking to a career coach, mm. ahem, ahem, yes. is very right. important. Yeah. Yes, Because yeah. we will guide you on mm. that journey of them exploring how can I turn this to my advantage. Right. So that we understand when uh, when an employer asks you what are your weaknesses, that question is actually loaded. Yes. So we, extremely. Yes. So when you say perfectionist, because you, you know how most <laughs> all the candidates, all ninety five point nine percent, I'm a perfectionist. Yes. Um, it, I pay is, attention is it to detail. Somewhere? Is it? It's in Google. It's, it's in the Google. first thing that it's comes first in thing, Google. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so, I think it's handed out with your parchment when exactly. you're graduating. <laughs> like, please go and tell them yeah? that I'm a perfectionist. I'm perfectionist. And I pay attention to detail. Yeah. And um, I, I think those two are the main ones. So you see, when you say those two. It tells me that you've not done your homework. You've mm. not analyzed yourself. Mm. You're not probably like emotionally intelligent. So, and, and I know of you know many hiring managers who are going to actually use that question to gauge. Mm. Because then if you're someone... Do I want to continue this interview or, or not? not? And, and also, if you answer it correctly, it's so, um, it gives you a lot of you know, points. Uh, because right. then, you know, it, it tells the hiring manager that you've thought about what your weaknesses are, your, your areas of development. Because when you're answering that question, you are, you tell them what the area is mm. and what you have done, you know, in the past six months to mm. ensure that that weakness is not standing exactly. in the way of you performing exactly. your job. So like now, for example, with your... Um, you know the lack of patience mm. i'm sure there are certain things that you are intentional about doing that have really helped you you know balancing right that is absolutely right yeah and one of it i learned this from eli broad's book called um the art of being unreasonable mm-hmm. it's an amazing way of approaching life mm. it's the concept that I will be unreasonable with the things that are not working for me. Yeah. And I will move them to the next level until Mm. it works for me. Mm. So for me, we are using and functioning on impatience, right? Mm. If that's the one I'm going to sit and and, um, address Mm. practically. Mm. You're looking beautiful. If it's (laughs) the one I'm going to sit and address my impatience, I will want to know my audience. Mm. Who am I being impatient with? To what level? Or are they aware that my impatience will hamper our project right. going forward. Right. So it's up to me, the owner of the <laughs> developmental area mm. or the owner of the impatience to be self-aware of the people I'm working with mm. or the people I'm responding to in this case, right? If I say that that is the thing that stands in the way of me doing things the way you would expect it. Right, yeah. right. So it's, 
it's a it's a very delicate balance between um self-awareness eq and wanting better for yourself exactly yeah. exactly because you know we are halfway um in 2022 mm. so i'm hoping at the beginning of the year you sat down and you know you you had a meeting with yourself yes. you know to say that these are the areas that i want to improve mm. so between january and july how is it looking mm. so that then when you're going for an interview when they ask you what are your weaknesses or what are the, your areas of development mm. you must be able to give a very solid answer and remember you are giving this area of development which needs to be honest yes. which needs to be well thought out mm. so don't not, use a google answer yeah don't say perfectionist or you know i pay attention to detail and it doesn't even have meat you have nothing to support that mm. you know area of development so you're giving an honest area of development that you have thought about and you're also telling them what are some of the things that you've done in the recent past to help uh, to ensure that this area of development is not standing in the way of you uh, performing your work well and then also you need also to use your wisdom for so that for example if you're mm. applying for an admin role yes you can't tell me your area of development is that you um you struggle with timekeeping <laughs> yeah. because for me i would be immediately wondering okay All if right. you're my admin or you're my front office yeah. person and you struggle with timekeeping there's going to be a problem with my collections exactly if you're the person who's making sure invoices are going out right. on time right. i know you're going to struggle with making sure our meetings are on time right. bookings are done and especially now that we are suffering from online fatigue mm. literally mm. so you'll find maybe we have multiple bookings mm. so already in my mind my mind is racing as an interviewer i'm wondering yes. okay hey, i don't know how we will work with this but perhaps you're able to tell me i struggle with timekeeping what i have done as a result of that mm. i have reminders yeah. constantly set yeah. i have invested in a phone that has a proper alarm yeah. that i'm able to put certain timers mm. and know when to do certain mm. things i keep note of at the end of a meeting this is what i've done and yeah. i have seen the norme you can even give the duration of time exactly. between this time i have noted an improvement yeah. meetings are no longer late mm. nana so that way i can walk with you the journey that's going on in your mind yeah. but half the time we approach interview panels with such um panic and fear and fear mm. you're only been interviewed by humans right they are only human right. they are exactly like you right. they just are on the other side of the table yeah. and we are hoping like you said a CV is to land you an interview mm. the interview is to land you an offer, an offer. Yeah. so we are hoping that you land the offer sign it and also be on this other side yeah. so approach it with calmness Exactly. If you if you're a person who's taken to anxiety rising mm. the day before make sure you've planned yourself completely yeah. be ready yeah. even do a mock interview with a friend of yours or use a mirror mm. if things are thick yeah. use a mirror yeah. speaking just gauge yourself when you come in it's okay to ask for a glass of water right it's okay mm. because then if that's what comes you down or like we had seen in the recent debates you can actually <laughs> ask twice sorry yeah, i didn't, I didn't hear, hear that uh, i didn't hear you again. come again <laughs> you know it's okay as mm. cuz you you know you're buying time yeah. for your nerves to come right because i do know even us on this other side of the table we are guilty sometimes of putting on such a stern look mm. as an interviewer yeah. and then you walk in a panel of 11 mm. people Surely. you know all you're doing is intimidating this person exactly. right which yeah. is not a tactic that works yeah. anymore more these yeah. days but calm yourself down be ready for the questions mm -hmm. but sell yourself from an authentic point of view because right. your truth will always come out right and right. it's harder to remember a lie exactly yeah. exactly mm. so i hope we have you know we have tackled that question uh, if they ask you tell us you know uh, what are some of your weaknesses in fact you you, you need to uh, you know um tell it back to them mm. as my areas of development yes. are 1 2 3 and 4 mm. right the next question which mm -hmm. i know like 95% of people really struggle with mm. can you tell us a little bit about yourself i know i think the do, minute do, do we still <laughs> ask that question <laughs> yeah I, okay even if it's not asked like that mm. it's asked in a different kind of yeah. way yeah uh, but then you know but it, of it course, will always very, come around yeah, huh? yeah. Mm. so what are some of the tips that you'd give uh, to you know someone watching and they really struggle with that question and yeah. actually I normally see 
you know, it's fresh graduates and mid-career and even senior executives who mm. struggle, mm. Mm. you know, with, uh, with, with, with this that question. And question. it's interesting because we come from a place where we have been taught not to toot our home. Mm. Right? You, you, you want to speak about your achievements. But then also imposter syndrome. There is that. Yeah. So we are dealing with many things mm. as you're going into this interview. Yeah. But the majority, or, or rather the thing I want you to take away from this is know your worth yeah. when you come into the table. Mm. And then know that you want to speak with authenticity. Mm. So when you're approaching the question, tell me about yourself. There are many things that you can look at. But the make the how do I put it, John? The the most the critical gist. yes, the mm. most critical area of this is approach this person's answer, I mean question, with an answer that is not necessarily on the CV. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They've already read your CV. I once had a candidate, right? Who when now I was interviewing on behalf of a client. Mm. So and the client was on the panel. Mm. And they actually asked, tell us about yourself. And the person said, um, everything else about me is on the CV. <laughs> we all looked at each other and the person wasn't being rude. They yeah. were in line. It yeah, is on the true. CV. Mm. But we encourage you to at least introduce yourself. It there is no harm. Yes, they've read the CV and it has your name there. Mm. I'm Omaida Karanja. This is me. Right? So that they get to get a glimpse of you mm. outside of the CV. Mm. Right? So mm. if you're applying to a company that um, maybe it's a foundation, it's a foundation and their interest is in wildlife conservation. Let mm. me, let me, let's just give that as an example. Right? Mm. Um, you could say that some of the things that appeal to you and why you want to work there, mm. you know, you're, you're moved by, by the impact of poaching. You're moved by the fact that maybe three generations to come or less yeah. may not find certain Maybe the big five wouldn't be there yeah. or a number of them. Yeah. You know, what, what attracts you to this company? Mm. Is it their values? Mm. Is it their value proposition? Is it their statement, mm. their mission statement? Mm. Let, let me connect with you mm. as a human being, mm. not just the paper. Right. Right? right. So you may give a bit of a highlight of who you are your career mm -hmm. you don't have to go into uh, i went to primary school in xyz and in yes and we mm -hmm. pray by the time you go to campus you we had hope passed, you had passed through this, those ones yeah you, you know didn't go yeah you didn't go into other <laughs> institutions and then end up you know currently we have those scenarios going on mm -hmm. but we would pray that you would then only give us a glimpse of your education and say you know a holder of whatever it is bachelor's or master's or phd or or you're not even a holder yeah because not all um positions require mm -hmm. graduate um certification walk me into that journey and then let me know a little bit about yourself you don't have to go into i am married to so and so or i'm a mother yeah. of so and so if that question is not coming up and really i don't think that's the space at the interview for right. that type of information right. but give me a glimpse of yourself like what things move you yeah what are you passionate about mm. maybe you're a systems admin what about solving issues for the it department mm. gets you going mm. you know let let the interviewer connect with a person yeah and not a stiff warm body that just showed up yeah for the yeah. interview yeah because i you know i i i, I believe that when they you know most hiring managers are asking this question they're asking Worms, who are you in relation to this job? Exactly. I'm not uh, when I ask because I think sometimes the candidates would get it wrong when, when mm. we ask. Mm. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You might think I want to know, um, you know, how many children do you have? Yes. Where do you live? What do you like to eat? That's yeah. not what I want to that's know. That's not that's not what I'm looking to hear yeah. at this point. Yeah. I'm looking to hear mm. why John for this position. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wh why how you? do I how do I contribute right. to the hiring manager's need. Right. 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 So I'm a recruiter and I'm being interviewed for a position. Is it my ability to connect with people mm. and pull out interview questions from them and mm. quickly see and see whether this person should pro proceed to the next level? Exactly. So I can be able to come and tell you at the interview. Mm. So I'm passionate about recruitment. I'm yes. passionate about interviewing. Yeah. And why I know I would work for this position is look at my track record mm. of the last maybe 18 months. These are the positions I've been I able to fill. Yeah. And maybe this is the industry within which I have been able to service. Right. And my turnaround time is mm. fast mm. because this is the approach I use. Right. You know? So right. now somebody listening to you mm. across the table at the interview is able to follow through and see, okay, 
there's Makes something sense. here exactly yeah. there's something here yeah. beyond what is on the cv because exactly. again we don't want to give them booklets yeah. of cvs so we've condensed the information mm. we hope they went to my linkedin to they see. read about me mm. they they looked at my about mm. they saw what i'm talking about mm. and then now it wet their appetite enough to invite me exactly. for the interview exactly. so don't don't beat about the bush mm. don't go round in circles yeah. answer what you're being asked mm. but let them see that there is a human Exactly. aspect to you exactly yeah. and i normally i i think most candidates are, mm. uh, who struggle with this question yes. the reason why they struggle mm. just like with the weakness uh, question mm. it's because you've not taken some time to ask yourself what are my strengths what are my skills yes. what am you know what are my passion mm. what is my talent what is you know uh what meaning do um, do i attach to the kind of work that i'm that doing do. what results matter to me because if you do not answer this question then you cannot answer tell me a little bit about yourself what exactly. are you going to say because there's something you taught me a couple of years ago mm. the approach of using par p a r mm. right mm. so what's my problem mm. when i was hired in this position yeah. what was the problem within that context why did they need somebody to mm -hmm. fill the position mm -hmm. so it was for recruitment yes okay okay then what what problems did i find or challenges did i find in that position mm. then what action did i take yeah towards sorting that out for mm. my line manager right. or for my organization mm. is it that i found we take such a long time with giving feedback mm. after an interview mm. so how did i shorten that yeah. that's the action mm. so the p is the problem yeah. then the action the a mm. then now the result what did i do that's an amazing way of now finding out mm. where my strengths are exactly. so my strength is being able to come up with systems mm. that are able to then streamline or shorten the process of interviewing yeah. now that would make sense to a hiring manager because they can see ah okay here uh, even as you're talking they're doing mother in their mm. head they're calculating mm. they're saying if i had this person then it would they shorten do, our time they can do this exactly. i can see your value exactly. but if you don't self review it's going to be impossible for you to answer Thank that you. question you won't know yeah. and you could be a stalling candidate you mm. could be an A1 candidate yeah. but the inability to, to express articulate. yourself and articulate mm. what you have self internalized mm. and assessed mm. becomes the problem exactly yeah. and you you love with me when i say uh just uh, even like, like for example you yourself mm -hmm. remember when you used to go for interviews mm. the, the the places where you interviewed and you were really passionate about that job yeah you know the, the interviews were so easy you know uh, even when they ask you to uh, you know tell us a little bit about yourself mm. you don't struggle mm. but then when you go for an interview and you know the only reason why um because then you could be qualified for a job mm. but then it's not in line with your strengths your skills and your passions so you you're going to you know like uh, really struggle I'm, I'm, I'm you know chance exit yeah sort of. yeah uh, I've, uh, I've, because i've also uh, found that sometimes uh, people find themselves in jobs that are not you know it's not in line completely aligned with your growth exactly. or your plans yeah but you have significant you know like ears mm. you know it, it's banking or you know it's operations so you you'll probably make it to you know at the interview but then it's like you you you're always struggling or you don't be found Mm. you don't want to be caught that you know you you you're not like this is not uh, your line exactly mm. and in, in in those cases i normally encourage people to, as in as much as possible i know there are no jobs in kenya or you know it, it's very hard mm. there are jobs in kenya there there are jobs there are jobs in kenya <laughs> it's, it's, it's they are scarce yes let's <laughs> but in, in as much as possible are high. Yeah. yeah in as much as possible try look for work that is in line with your strengths your skills and your passions you'll find it very easy you know to when gravitate you go... in that direction yeah. and it's okay to recareer mm. it's okay it's yeah. okay to recareer it's okay to look and say this is not working for me which one am i going to do mm. differently mm. and as you're looking for those jobs okay i don't think at this point you're going to apply to be a doctor you know there, there's yeah. a certain component yeah. you needed to have learned you know you <laughs> needed to doing... have gone through med school yeah. isn't it yeah. then you needed to have interned and then come out as a doctor exactly or like you arms you can not be a pr public really as in yeah now i i see mama i decide now i want to open yeah. a, an agency i know a nothing PR. about all i know is being on mm -hmm. this side of of the mic yeah. i don't know the work that goes into mm. making a pr person mm. like let's say let's mm. use that as an example mm. so even when you are applying please let there be at least you own four things eh? 
there is knowledge that you have, mm. the competencies that are aligned to that position. Yeah. You have the personal attributes. Mm. You know, there are some jobs that require you to actually just smile through nonsense eh? mm. and, and, and have a face that looks like I am with <laughs> Customer you. Customer service. Yes, exactly. When your client face him, mm. whatever your problems are, please check them at the door. Yeah. Because we need that client happy, happy for us to pay you. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. So are we looking at my personal attributes? Am I a back office? Because there are people who smiling doesn't come naturally to them. Mm. Being not that they are rude, but going that extra mile of wanting to sort out a problem for you doesn't come naturally. Mm. Remember how for the longest time we knew accountants don't engage in small talk? Accountants just come into work, they're just they do their work. crunching numbers, looking for loopholes. How do we reduce now? Then now you have that person and say, I want you to be my front office admin. No, it's not possible. You you can see a conflict. And mm. the person maybe may take the job because life is hard. Yeah, right it now. is. Life they need is to hard. feed their children. Exactly. I have a thousand and one responsibilities, right? F- forget even the roof over my head, the food in my stomach. Mm. There are so many other things that you need to do. So when I'm approaching this job, am I approaching it and saying, I have I actually have the personal attributes mm. that can go for this job yeah. and then i have the experience so it's a simple acronym kcpe mm. Mm. keep that at the back of your mind right. what knowledge do i have what competencies competencies sorry do i possess mm. that are a skills match right. or skills transfer mm. for my client mm. is my personality one that works with what they're looking for right and then my experience what have i done across my years mm. that would make me a good match for you exactly and guys if you have that you know kcp in check mm. it doesn't matter if you shrub it doesn't matter if you stammer like me or like you're not so confident <laughs> you and it Moses doesn't matter and look at how great <laughs> you are doesn't matter it doesn't really matter yeah but if you're able to know what you know the basics are if, you, if, if you're just able to know like the keywords state capture yes. only <laughs> If that's the one you're going to ride with, go with it to, to the very dead. end. If you're corrected, dead. you just where where are a face of I have heard you. Yes. But set capture. Yes. And you continue. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I heard what you said, but I am put continue with this one. Yes, because you Joe going our mother coached me and this is how I'm going. It's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. You are not going to go wrong. Yes. This, it, it's it, it's it's literally, you know, uh, impossible. But then you could be very confident, but you don't have KCP. Mm? You don't have anything. Yeah. But not that, in fact, not that you don't have. You don't know that you don't have. Right. That's even worse. Right. Because you went to school, yes. Mm. You did the things you did, yes. Yeah. But you've never seen that there's a place for you to put all these things together and mm. present yourself. Right. So you're, you're just winging it. Mm. Just winging it, hoping you won't be asked... <laughs> are you who you are <laughs> in the interview? Are you, you a mother? Are you a mother? Are you, you a mother? <laughs> Did you invite a mother? You know, you're, you're, you're very clear. Can you prove to us you're a mother? Exactly. You know, so, so now I'm busy removing my ID. I'm trying to prove to you from my huduma number. And if, no, but guys, you know your staff. Yeah. The person on the other side is just That's a person. Exactly. They just want to hear you bring it out. And see how you can meet their need. Right. Because all managers want to do, they want to finish out that job. Hire you, move you on to your line manager, they onboard as we continue with looking for more staff, right. depending on what the company's need is. Yeah. But if you're going to be stuck in the inability to explain who you are, mm. whatever qualifications you have will not work it for you. It doesn't matter. They won't yeah. speak for you. Yeah. And guys also remember, as a job seeker, mm-hmm. I know you are, you know, there's that feeling of desperation. I really want this job. Mm. But also remember, the hiring managers and even recruiters, yes. you know, like us as recruiters, we are also desperate for good candidates. Mm. We are desperate for you to give us good answers. We are desperate to say, you know, this person is hired. Mm. So and it, to shorten the length of this business. Time, because yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah. Can you imagine? And it's not only through? one role I'm I'm interviewing yeah for. they're 57 mm-hmm. uh, so on the a, quicker on a good day. <laughs> yeah so the quicker the roles are filled you know are the better so you are desperate for the job but even the hiring managers and the recruiters are also desperate to, to hire you yeah. um so um so 